hello all right uh good day uh welcome back thanks for coming back so today's video is going to be on how to configure git um, previous video showed you how to install git in windows mac and of course linux also and i promised at the end of those videos i showed you how git is successfully installed but it kind of added like a little complaint when we tried to initialize a, not initialize a project but actually commit um our first file after we made some changes it complained that i don't know who you are and i said well you know what this is going to happen across all the environment the configuration is the same so um we'll cover that in a separate video now i decided to do it in windows because i think windows is going to be the more challenging environment to do the configuration even though the configuration is essentially the same so i figured let's do it in windows and it should work for most everyone else um so here we go um if you follow my recommendation again this is only applies to people these videos on git only applies to people who are actually doing the git installation right so if you're not interested in git or you're not didn't do a git installation you should not watch any these videos any of these videos on git uh, remember you can still do the code and not actually do the uh, the version control which i'm using git uh, again the reason for that is that I just want to teach people good programming um, behavior as a feature software developer, if that's your thing. And so that's why I'm doing the Git stuff. So if you don't care about that and you just want to learn how to program, just don't ignore these videos. Don't even watch them. Well, you could watch them if you like, but remember. Uh, anyway, let me stop mumbling and see if I can get through this. In the installation video, I suggested that you install for, for Git for Windows. I suggested that you install Git Bash. Now, what Git Bash gives you is a Unix-like environment where I can type stuff like ls, and um, it's going to show me the list of files in my directory. ls means list. If you did not install, or I could type pwd to see where I'm at located, and it says I'm in C user viral, and that's my home directory. If you did not install git bash don't worry you can still use the command line that comes in windows which is called um the, well it used to be called the dash prompt but just command prompt and you type cmd press enter and you get a window that looks eerily the same and so now you can type dir for example for directory now if you type ls it will work only if you install the git bash but other than that, don't expect LS to work if you did not install Git Bash or some other Unix-like environment in your Windows. Here you want to type DIR. Now, once you have that going, and we can confirm that our Git is working. There it is. It's working. Um, one of the things we did before was we said make directory DVL. Then I went into the development directory, and I said um, MKDIR projects. Then I went into projects and I say MKDIR um, test or something like that for test project and CD into test project. And then, of course, there's nothing in there. And then I did like echo in, and this was a Unix thing I did in Linux and so on. And I think it worked here too, but let's do hello world. And then we put this into a file called readme.md. And so DIR, there's my file, and then I did git init to initialize the project. And then when I did git, com oh, and git status, all right? Shows me, to, hey, I don't know who this file, anything about this file, it's on track. I did git add, and then I said, just read me file. It's complaining about line endings, but we'll get around to all that one time. Uh, I, I think I mentioned in one of the videos too about how Linux versus Unix does line endings. The, carriage return line feed thing, but we'll cover that another time if it makes sense without being distracting. But the important thing I want to get to is when I say git commit, oh, status again, and we see now that it says, oh, this is a new file you want to commit, and I know I'll, I'll commit this file next time you do a check in, I commit, I check in, right? So, uh, or commit, using to be changeably, but commit and git. So I do git commit, and I want to use a message that says um, initial check in, right? And then Git says, I don't know who you are. And it says, so run these commands so I know who you are. Now, what I'm going to do is if you're using this, you can type ls minus a, and it would show you any hidden files. Um, and there are no hidden files. Hidden files have a dot in front of them. Well, there's this regtr trans file, and there's the 
dat and single dat and double dat, which means dat means current directory, double dat means parent directory, but we're not going to worry about that. What's interesting for us, is, important for us, is that the only hidden file they have here is this file, and we don't care about that. Um, let's go ahead and execute that command that is there. So get config minus minus global and user that email and double quote. I'm going to say my email is vero at uh, let's say supercool.com. No, that's not where my email is. I'm just taking something. And then I say git config minus minus global user that name. And I'll say Perl, of course, right? Perl Adams. Enter. Now, when I did that, what actually happened? Well, let's go back up here and type ls minus a. And this time when I type ls minus a, what I'm expecting to see in my home directory is a file that says that git config. And there it is. I can't highlight it, but there it is, right? Now, that's for people who use in the Linux-like environment could type ls minus a. If you have a Linux environment on a Unix environment in Windows, or if you actually on Linux or Mac. But for people who don't have that, what should you be typing? If you type dir, you look, you only see. Um, oh, well, let's get another environment up here. Okay, let's do, let's do that. Um, cmd, and let's open another one. And this one is going to be in my own directory. This one is in my project directory, as we can see here. And so if I type dir, um, I see my git config file also, right? So the dir directory does show me that. Now for Windows people, just be aware that if I go here and I try to, this is the libraries directory. This is not my home directory. The libraries directory, I think, is like a documents directory. Well, no, not documents, but it's, it's some other directory that Windows creates for you to have so many things like music videos, but it doesn't show you everything, right? Um, confusing windows but anyway if i wanted to see my home directory from here i have to go to computer c drive because that's where it says my home directory is in the c drive users and then there's Verl, and then this is my um my home directory and then if you're lucky you're going to see git config there if you don't see it what you want to do is click on organize and then click on folders and search properties then click on view and then click on show hidden files, folders, and directories, okay, if you don't see it. Now, this is not checked, and I'm seeing that hidden file, so you should be fine. Now, how do you edit this file? Well, I'm going to type, um, oh, I'm going to go back to this window here. I'm going to type, because this is my home directory, this is where this file that git config is, right? I'm going to type notepad that git config. Now, everybody else who's in Windows or Mac, for Linux, you can use gedit. For Mac users, you can use um, text edit. Okay, and you type the same thing like text edit space this from your home directory or gedit space this from your home directory. When I open this, um, this is what you're gonna see. Um, now I know it's how this is supposed to be formatted differently, but Windows and weirdness, it it doesn't do it. Yeah. So here's how it should be formatted. And there's user and there's a square bracket around it. And this is basically what's called an INI file. Um, and so INI is, is a Windows formatted file that it, I think they debuted way back in 19, Windows 95, and maybe it might even been before in Windows 4 Group 3 or something. But nevertheless, this is a section, and then these are the properties with the name of the property and then the value per line, okay? And so if you remember, when we typed the command uh, git config, we said to change, make change the configuration, but I want to do the global configuration. Hence, why put it in your home directory? Because every Git project from now on is going to use this configuration file first, and then you can have per, uh, project specific configuration file. Hence, well, you can save the project configuration file inside your project directory, and I'll show you where that is possibly later. But the important thing is that this is the global one. And this is going to apply for all your Git projects. And that's why you want to set like your name and stuff there. Because you don't want to keep changing your name per project, right? Unless you have a reason to do that. But And so it says this is your user section and email. And that's where you see user that email. And so this user section and the property called email. And I set it to whatever value. And so we could have just created this text file. But I wanted to execute those commands. Show you how this file would be created where it's going. And then now you can go ahead and do some other things in here. So I'm going to show you some of the configuration that I have in mind. And um, then, you know, you can choose to add them to yours. I'm going to post all in the description of the video. So, for example, now that we have this, we can go back and say, let's try and commit 
do a commit now. And when we do a commit, you see it was successful. Git accepted it, and I can do git log, and it shows me that oh, this is the commit um, hash, you know, commit ID, and who did it, and the date, and the, the message, all right? Um, so notice it's colorized the screen already for me, but uh, one of the things I could do is I can say I want my branches to be colored differently. And we haven't really covered branching yet, but just trust me in this, I can say git branch, and I could set test. And basically I create another branch of my of this repository where I can do some other work without messing up with um, things. You know, if you want to do try different ideas, so I could come over and test something out and see if it works before I think. And so if I type git branch, it would show me all the branches I have. And so I have this star master branch, and I didn't explain that, but by default, you're always on a master branch unless you say otherwise when you first initialize a git repository. And then no, I've created another branch called test, but I'm not on the test branch, I just created it, okay? I could say I wanna go on the test branch by doing, that's why you see the starter, check out, check out the test branch. And now if I retype the branch command, now you can see that the star is on the test branch. And notice the branch I'm on, the active branch or current branch have a star and how oh, it's colored. Well, what if I wanted things to color differently? I could say color, and I want the branch, and you do the branch outputs, I want them to be colored differently. And I'm gonna say, if I'm on the current branch, I want the color you wanna use is yellow. Uh, let's leave it as green um, and reverse probably. I want any local branch to be colored in just green. And then any remote branch, which we haven't talked about yet, um, to be colored in yellow, All right? And so I'm going to do save on this. And then now I'm going to retype my git branch command, git branch. And then now you can see that, oh, that my current branch is, you know, this green and reverse background. And then, um, or the opposite basically. And then um, my um, other non thing branch is still green, right? So any local branches are green and then the current one is colored this way. I guess I could actually choose any other color like MAG, MTA, magenta, if, if, if you wanted to um, go crazy. And then I could retype that thing and then I could see, hey, this is my current branch and any local branch. And then if I had a remote branch, something that I was tracking from somewhere else or someone else, somebody else, I could, um, I would see that in like yellow. So you could use any color you want, right? Um, so however you, however you want to do it, right? Um, I guess I'll leave it like this for now. All right. Uh, sorry about that. I hit some buttons there just now. All right. So that's one configuration I can do. The other one I can do is um, how I look at differences. I could say color um, my this and um, meta equals, which it changes, um, equals bold um, fragments equals magenta bold. Um, old stuff equals the red, stuff that's deleted, for example. New stuff that's added should be green, okay? And um, this come in handy, and I'm gonna do file save, um, because I don't have any diff on my branch right on my code right now. So if I do git, git status, it tell me not no changes. And so if I do git diff, there's nothing to think. But let's say I did edit my file. Let's do add something else to my file. Let me say, let me add um, um, hello world and let's say thank you. And I'm gonna add it to the end of my file that I already have, right? And so I do that. And so now if I do, um, you know, notepad. Um, read me, whatever. You'll see that oh, I have the hello world. It puts the quotes in there, but all right, I'll take out the quotes. So now what you're going to see is that I have this new line. So this is added, and then the first line is changed. And so you see Git is going to color them, you know, that line and put like red or something, and it's going to show the, the change line. But let's just save it and see how it looks. All right. And so I'll do Git status and tell me there's some changes. It says, it says that file was modified, which is good. It was. And I'll say git diff. And now you can see how it colored it, right? Um, it says the old stuff, which is quote, hello world quote, that's been removed. That's why you see the, the dash. I don't know if it's, you can actually see it. There's a dash in front of it. 
and then just stuff that was added plus hello world without quotes and then plus this add line all right and so i can do git add and then i could do um i can add this file to my next commit that's what basically i want to say is when i do the next commit add this file and then git commit and then minus m and i could say added some added a new line or added thank you for example added thanks you know and so now it tells me tell me i thought hey this file was changed there were two insertion one deletion whatever um but if i do git status now you can see that though it's all clean. Um, of course, you know that though this file now has been changed that way, but this is on my test branch, right? Git branch, if I do that, it's on my test branch. Let's go back to my master branch, git checkout, and then check out the master branch. And then let's do notepad uh, readme and see what's different. Well, here you go, notepad, uh, my file on the master still is the old the way it was before. So that's the advantage of branching. I could go off on a branch. Look how easy it was for me to say branch, go off there, test something. I come back to my other branch and the file is still the same. So branches allow you to just do these nice little tests and so on. But anyway, um, so, so that's how uh, my color diff could come in handy and I show you branch. And there are a couple other ones we could do. So we could do alias. And I can say that A equals to add. So instead of me typing git add, I could just do git A. And instead of me typing the branch command all the time, I can just say branch and B anything. And so I want to do my minus V to mean verbose, right? And I could add some other alias. I could C equals to commit minus M. So instead of me always typing commit with a message minus M, I could just type that. And commit minus AM, which means add and um, everything that you know about that's modified and do a message. So instead of me doing git add this file and then git commit, those two separate operations, I could do git commit minus am and it would be the same. The a there is the add. So don't worry, I'll demonstrate that just now. And then git ci equals to com um, you know, commit. It's just in case I just want to type commit alone, right? Um, there's also, um, I could do co equals to checkout. So I don't have to actually type the word checkout, right? Um, I could do new branch and check out a new branch. So it eventually I'll, before I type git branch test and I created a branch, but I didn't check it out. And then later on I said git checkout test. Well, this combines it and say, check out, create a branch and check it out. So again, so there are a number of other ones, right? Like I could do, and you could create as many as you want for the git commands, like diff D for diff. Um, so I don't have to type git diff. I could just type D L for log and then we can say show a graph which is show how things are related um which branch is derived from which branch and other status so minus date equals short so instead of showing the long date um when i did the git status earlier you saw the very long date um see where was that it was this long date now i'm saying show short date when i do this log command and i'll just use l for log alone and there are obviously more, but we're going to stop here because I think this is enough and this video is probably getting too long. So I'm going to quit this, close this, and let me just show you some of those. So if I do git L, um, notice the short date, and I just type L alone. Um, let's say I want to create another branch. So I want to check out to so git, git CO, which I thought was a test branch, you remember that? And then if I um, look at the file here, I should see my changes. Um, you know, those two lines of changes. Oh, thanks. And again, Windows and its new line, it didn't preserve it. Uh, that's something else actually we can actually change, uh, fix. So I'm going to save changes. And I'm going to open again, I'm going to open this file. And I'm going to say that uh, um, what I want is in the core section, I want to use safe C cards line line feed equals to carriage return line feed equals to false. And this should help us get around. No, I, I got a feeling I got to set it somewhere else too. That's fine. Uh, this should help us get around um, some of that carriage return issue that Git is complaining about. Um, that when we see when we, we modified stuff, um, Windows using a different carriage return than um, <clears throat> It's, it's using carriage return alone and not carriage return line feed. So uh, that's fine. Now, when we use the, the other editors, they're going to hide all this stuff from us. 
So this usually becomes a problem when you start mixing project with other people who are in a different system because the Windows use one kind of return line feed and yet Unix and Linux, uh, Unix tech environment just use line feed alone. Um, kind of return, sorry. So, all right, what was I gonna show? Um, so there's the file that's changed. Um, so git status. Or I, could, uh, I didn't put no one for status. I should have put um, git st to mean status. So let's do that. So alias, I want st to equal status. So I don't have to type, keep typing status all the time. Uh, let's save that, close. And I'm gonna end this video just because I got a feeling it's just running too long. So git st, and that's my status, and then git. Um, now here's an example. Not before I would have to type add this file, then commit it. So I know I could do commit and um, you know ca right to do commit minus m so that's the same as if i type git commit minus am to add and give a message and say i had some changes but instead of me typing the commit space minus am i'll just say ca because i have that as an alias which means commit space minus m and then my message is simply you know new line or something like that right and now I get the same effect. And if I do git st, I see it, oh, there's no changes. So it saved me typing two commands if I just use commit minus am. And then just typing ca saved me from even typing commit minus am. So you see how the alias is coming in handy. And then now I have git b for branches. It showed me the branches here. And then um, if I want to check out to, to actually create a branch and check it out, I could do like git um, new branch and then call it dev for example and now I've created another branch and I could do git b and I'll see I have three branches and now I'm on that dev branch because I, I created the branch and checked it out as opposed to just creating the branch separately then checking it out and so now I can actually do some more changes here I can actually do like you know echo a third line and then add it to the file right and then I could do the git check in and add and then say Oh, my message is added in development or something like that. And then it added this here. And if I get do git CEO check out like test, for example, and then I do node, node, notepad, um, this file, you'll see that oh, this only have two lines. And it's still not respecting my thing, but we'll, we'll fix that. And so I hope, without this video getting too much longer, I hope this demonstrates how we configured Git. It's all good. Um, the crash length thing, I'll address that in another video or something when we start doing development. But hopefully this shows show you how to set up your Git environment and get it running. That's all you need was just those first two lines that gives you a username and thing. Everything after that was just gravy. The whole alias and coloring and all that stuff, that was just gravy. So you could just stop at the f after you type those first two lines. Thanks, and see you in the next video. Okay. All right. Bye.